This is a bike check on my Pole Stamina 180. Well, it's been a while since we've done any of bike checks on our own bikes at GMBN, and so thought, why not? You may have seen this bike I built up back at the start of lockdown, built my super bike, uh, I specced it up with some cool parts. I'll talk you through what's on it, how I like things set up, and tell you some interesting things about my bike. Pole bicycles, or Pole, if you uh, pronounce it like they do in Finland, uh, based over there, they're hand built over there, and that's what's so interesting about these stamina, especially. Uh, this is the 180 version, so 180 mil travel front and rear, 29er bike. Although I think, you know, the, the geometry I'll get into in a minute, but the geometry and the size of this thing, it doesn't actually look like a, a 29er bike to me. It looks more like just a standard sort of 650 bike. All the angles and everything, the length of everything, really sort of scale up to the wheels. So I think they look kind of pretty normal for a big wheel bike. Um, what's really interesting about how they make these frames, so they're CNC machined but in two halves, basically two sides, and then they're sort of stuck together using aircraft quality glue. Uh, suspension wise, running rock shocks front and rear, I've got the Lyric Ultimate up front, 180mm travel, running 65 psi in there, I weigh about 70 kilos, so that feels pretty good to me. Uh, super Deluxe Ultimate rear shock. Um, really suspension is something that I, I set up when I get a bike and I don't tweak them that much. It's not like I'm racing these days where I used to just really play around with the clickers here and there all the time. At the moment, I pretty much just set them up and roll and I don't really change them. Um, something interesting about this shock, you'll see that it's sort of mounted sideways. So the piggyback actually sticks out the side of the bike. I guess that's not conventional to normal bikes to either have them above or below, but just giving it out um, that piggyback outside gives you space to fit a bottle cage in here so it fits nicely you really don't notice it i have had people ask me if you hit your leg and anything really don't notice that when you're riding you've actually got the opportunity to put three bottle cages on this bike if you want to one here second up there and also one below you can see this on the side of my bottle cage i've actually got this toe peak uh, it's a tubeless plug tool when I'm out riding, I'll also strap a tube to my bike as well and carry a pump normally in my bib shorts. So well prepared for any punctures out on the trail. I'm running Mavic D-Max Pro wheels, 29er. Uh, they're actually alloy rims on these. They're the Enduro wheels, so nice and robust. You never have any sort of catastrophic failures with these. Um, you've got obviously the yellow hubs and the yellow spokes that Mavic are renowned for. And you've got those really deep spokes, sort of bladed spokes as well on these. 28 mil internal width on the rim, so pretty wide. Gives you that nice shape that suits most modern day enduro tires. Uh, running Vittoria Mazda up front, that's a 2.4. And then I've got the Morsa, which is a slightly lower profile tire, 2.3 on the back. I have to say that's this was my sort of summer UK setup. It's been pretty dry actually. So it's quite, you know, you wouldn't call it a semi-slick, but it's quite low profile in the middle of that rear tire. So nice and fast. Uh, actually my go-to tire now has become that Mazza. I really, really like it. So um, I'm out in Finale Liguri here riding some injury trails. Uh, if I'd have been more prepared, I would have put a Mazza on the back as well. Uh, it just really suits these type of trails. It's got really good rubber compound, loads of protection, and you know proper grip for riding enduro stuff. So the bike came with the SRAM Eagle drivetrain, and you may have seen in that Superbike video where I did some nice upgrades. So I've got the SRAM Access wireless gears on here now. Again, one by 12, obviously. You've got the controller up on the bar. Rear mech, you can see there's the battery there. I'll show you that close up. That just comes unclipped. Uh, interestingly, it's the first time I've flown with it, so you have to remember to take the battery off and put it in your hand luggage. You don't want to be sending it in the bike bag with its battery on there. I guess the security could pick up on that. Um, I've played around a little bit with the shifters to get it set up exactly in the right spot, but also on the app, you can switch which way around it shifts. Uh, I've tried it a couple of different ways and I've gone back actually to the default. So the, the one nearest the bar shifts you to your higher gears and then sort of the furthest away from the bar goes to your lower gears and that works really nicely. Uh, you can see I've got the rest of the SRAM drivetrain. Um, the X01 cranks are pretty much one of the few carbon things I do have on this bike. So of course alloy frame, uh, rims, uh, I've got the Truthive Descendant uh, carbon bars and then those X01 carbon cranks. Of course, the 1050 big uh, Eagle 500% cassette on there and the gold chain. I have got a few bits you may have noticed, like that petrol, what are they calling it? Like the petrol fade. 
Um, so you can see my Ergon grips on the collar and on this saddle. And at home, I actually do have one of the SRAM Eagle cassettes in that color as well. So I've put a little plan together, I've hatched a plan to come up, see if I can get one of the chains as well, that'd be very nice. So I've got all those sort of petrol oil slick touches on the bike, I reckon that'd look pretty cool. Yeah, a couple of Ergon parts. I've got the GE1 grips, Enduro grips, with that lovely collar you've seen. This saddle is actually a new addition. I put that on just yesterday before I flew out here. So this is the Ergon SM Enduro Pro Tie. So titanium rails underneath there, pretty cool, eh? I've swapped that out. I had an SM Pro saddle on there before, which is my favorite saddle. Uh, it's really comfy. Uh, and actually, I didn't notice much difference until I lined them up when I took that one off. And this is actually quite a low, uh, it's like much narrower than that other saddle. It's obviously got this big cutaway in the middle as well, and actually it is comfy as well, so I was kind of worried leaving the SM Pro behind, it's a comfy saddle ever, but this has been really good. Crank Brothers Highline Dropper Post, it's actually a 170. If I'm honest, I need to swap it out for 150 because when it's maxed out, it won't go any further into the frame, so it's got quite a short uh, seat tube on this bike. And it's actually a touch too high, a bit annoyingly, so I actually have to sit in my post a little bit for riding up climbs. So I'm going to swap that out for a 150 as soon as I remember to do that one. Uh, what other parts? Well, I've got actually on that dropper lever, I've put some of that grip tape. You can buy the Crank Brothers uh, packs of those, different colours, put a black grip tape on there. I really actually do quite like that. Um, really fancy part of this bike, brakes. So these are the Trick Stuff Diratisma. Incredibly powerful, they're ridiculous. I don't know how they do it, but they make these brakes so powerful. They're not even you know, the downhill brake. You can get bigger brakes than this. I'm not sure you'd need them, to be honest. What um, I will say is I'm very spoiled, obviously, in this job. We get to ride loads of different bikes. I've got cross-country bikes and stuff. And I find it quite hard swapping because these brakes are just so powerful. I do like them so you don't have to pull brakes very much and then they, they, you know, the pads hit the brake and you start going straight away. I don't like a lot of travel on the lever, but getting used to this bike being so powerful with such little throw on there takes me a little while. I dare say if this was the only bike I rode, you'd get used to it. And actually, you know, the power I really do like, it's just trying to get used to it again when you haven't ridden them for a while. A few more details. I've got that uh, STFU, stands for shut up. Uh, chain guide coming down off the seat stay, just stops the chain slapping around. Come standard with the frame, actually. You've also got that bit of covering, come standard with the frame on chain stay. Stop any noise. Crank Brothers stamp, seven pedals. They come with the long pins of standard, which is nice, like that. Um, I also run the small pedal, so I've got UK eight feet. So I'm right in the middle. They'd recommend small or large. I prefer the smaller pedals. I like the way my feet sits on them more than the large. So yeah, perfect. Um, 203 mil rotor, so big old discs on this bike. And tire pressures, I've actually started coming down a bit my tire pressures, running sort of low 20s now, sort of 22 on the front, 26 on the rear, compared to probably a few years ago, or a couple of years ago, 28 on the rear, 26 on the front. So whether it's tires are getting better with their construction or I'm getting slower, or maybe a combination of both, but lower pressures seem to work much better for me nowadays. And I don't rim out and pinch my tires half as much as I used to. Right, thanks for watching. Uh, leave your questions down below. Actually, I'll try and uh, answer those. If I've missed anything, leave them down below, I'll jump on. Uh, so there is my Stamina 180 proper enduro bike. Hope you like it. Give us a thumbs up if you like my bike.